Okay, so here is the wave equation we want to solve and the simulation domain with 1D elements. Last time we started to develop node equations for the two nodes of each element. Those are here. So instead of enforcing that this wave equation is equal to zero across all x positions in space, we are enforcing that this wave equation is equal to zero in a weighted sense. Meaning that at the first node of each element, we are multiplying by the first weighting function, w1, and we're integrating over the length of the element and setting this whole quantity equal to zero. Just like here, we have it equal to zero. And we're doing the same thing for the second node of each element using a second weighting function, w2. That's also equal to zero in a weighted sense. This is typically called the weak form of the differential equation we're solving because we're enforcing this equation in an average and therefore weaker sense. Now before we can evaluate these two equations for each element, this one and this one, we need to define the weighting functions w1 and w2. We also need to expand the unknown ez. That is, since we are going to be integrating this equation in the bracket, this one right here and here, we're going to be integrating it over the length of each element, then we need to have an estimate for both the unknown, ez, across the length of each element, as well as an uh, we must also have an estimate for the second partial derivative of ez across each element. Let's consider just one example element with two nodes, 1 and 2, extending from x1 for the element number to x2. So the subscript here is the node number and the superscript is the element number. In order to integrate across the length of this element, we need an approximation of what ez is equal to in between each of the nodes of this element. How can we approximate ez across the element? Well, since we're solving for the ez values at the two nodes, we can interpolate the values of ez between the two nodes using an inter interpolation function or a basis function. Since we have two nodes, we will have two interpolation functions, one for each node of the element. Let's call the interpolation functions n, capital N. n1 for the interpolation function corresponding to node 1, and n2 for the interpolation function corresponding to node 2. So the subscript here also refers to the node number. Let's start with the simplest interpolation functions possible which are just linear interpolation functions of ez between each of the two nodes of the grid. So in this case, each interpolation function will have its largest value, say a normalized value of 1. So this goes from x1 for the element to x2 of the element. I'm going to plot n1 here. And it's going to have a value of 1 at the node it corresponds to. So at node 1, this is going to, uh, interpolation function for node 1 will have a value of 1, and it'll have the smallest value, a linear change to the smallest value of 0 at the other node of the element. So if this is the interpolation function for n1, and for n2, which also goes from x1 of the element to node 2 along the x-axis of the element, this will have a value of 1 at node 2 and a value of 0 at node 1. Later, when we combine all of the nodes, the interpolation functions will look like this across the grid. Say, if I have three elements with a total of four nodes, then this will be n1 and n2 of the first element, then we have n1 and n2 of the second element, and we have n1 and n2 for the third element. And so this will create a linear interpolation of ez in between all of the nodes. So say we have solved 
for EZ, here's node 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is EZ at node 1, EZ at node 2, EZ at node 3, and the value of EZ at node 4 that we've solved for. We'll get a smooth uh, interpolation between each of these EZ values of the grid. So using these two interpolation functions, now spend a minute and write an expression for EZ within just one element of our grid. Use the two interpolation functions, N1 and N2, that we developed for that element, as well as the value of EZ at the two nodes of the element.